All right, so it's a pleasure to be with you this afternoon. Uh, I would agree with Phil that most of what we talk about uh, fits for goats as well. The big challenge with goats is they don't grow nearly as fast, so you probably can't wean quite as young as we do with lambs. Uh, so yes, I work for Premier One basically as a private extension person. Uh, I was extension specialist at Iowa State for 33 years. Uh, that's my phone number and email. So if you got questions that we don't get to today, uh, you can contact me later on some follow-up or if you would like. Uh, so here's a little bit about my background. I grew up in Indiana. I attended Purdue University, was on the judging team and also was in block and bridal. Uh, my dad worked in the factory, but we had a small hobby farm in Indiana. I had two uncles that were into livestock. One had swine, one had feedlot cattle, and I bailed a lot of small squares of hay in my day. So uh, I got my PhD in ruminant nutrition from New Mexico State University in Las Cruces. Uh, I developed a national sheep improvement program in 1987. And then we've got two software packages that I developed with Garland Alkey. Uh, one is a goat brands and one's a sheep brands. Brands stands for beef ration and nutrition decision software. So we had those in the beef center and the beef extension first, and then we modified them over for sheep. So when we think about early weaning, as Phil's already talked about, I've got some of this in here because I wasn't exactly sure what I was supposed to talk about until this morning. Uh, but why we early wean, you use a lead a lot less. It'll cut their intake probably by 50%. Secondly, they don't need near as a nutrient a dense a diet because they're not farming, not producing. Uh, we can use lower quality forages and we can put the good feed into the land. Uh, early weaning options. And obviously Phil mentioned, you know, you gotta have the, your plan put together. Ideally, we should have these lambs used to going to the creek feeder before we wean them uh, to try to minimize that stress. So if you're running out of feed, maybe wait a week. Uh, I grew, am in, grew up in Indiana. I've lived in Iowa for 30, almost 40 years now. Iowa's corn country, baby. Even though it's dry, we're still gonna grow a lot of corn in this state, but it's expensive. It's 260 a ton here. So it's probably 340 a ton in your state. Um, we got to put protein into that ration because these lambs have high lean growth, especially just wean lambs as they're in that 40, 50, 60 pound range. And then the other thing we've got to do is we've got to balance for the calcium and phosphorus ratio because grain, whether that's corn, whether that's barley, whether that's wheat, uh, they tend to be very low in calcium, but very high in phosphorus so we can get into calculi problems. So sheep people are notoriously cheap. All right, now you guys all know that. And so the, the cheapest way we could try to feed these lambs after weaning them to use is just give them a bit. And I checked feed costs last night for Idaho and your hay costs are cheap. If fuel wasn't so expensive, I'd be trucking hay to Iowa from Idaho. 180, $200 a ton for alfalfa hay. We couldn't touch it for maybe less than 260 to 280. The problem is those small lambs just can't eat much alfalfa hay per day and it's not very energy dense. So they don't gain very fast on straight alfalfa. Now. If we're talking Western range lambs that are being weaned at four or five months and been eating forage for a couple months and have a big rumen and are mature, they probably could gain twice that fast because they can eat a lot more, but those can't eat enough. And because they don't eat enough, their cost of gain on $200 ton hay is gonna be $1.66 which is still right now a dollar less than the price of market lambs, or at least a six, 70 cents. And on light lambs, it'd be about a dollar less. So, and so I figure a 
feed conversion of about 10 to one on a straight alfalfa hay for those smaller lambs. Another option would be to go with alfalfa hay primarily, but we could use whole corn. Uh, that would give us an appropriate calcium to phosphorus ratio. It's about a 14%, 15% crude protein ration. Uh, I calculated that out to about 225 a ton. Feed cost would be about $1.13 on feed cost per pound of gain, which is better than a straight alfalfa. And we have about an eight to one feed conversion. And that extra corn got us a little extra growth, right? The problem with this ration is we still got a problem in that we're not providing any salt, we're not providing any trace minerals, we're not giving any decox to these lambs or Bovitec to help prevent coccidiosis. And as we think about changing up and weaning lambs, feeding these lambs out, especially the range operations, range operations don't have to worry too much, especially if they're moving their sheep every day about coccidiosis because it's fecal oral. The coccidae go out in the feces. Those lambs are long gone, so they don't get re-exposed to the feces. The parasites, the lambs are long gone, so we don't have to worry about internal parasites. But if we bring them into the dry lot or a trap or a small enclosure, then they can't get away. They're, they're going right back to the same spot every day where they defecated. So we can have some potential coccidiosis buildup. So that's something we need to be watchful of. Um, we could use whole corn, 60% of the ration, 15% protein supplement. So a lamb protein supplement, you would not want to use a bee supplement, or at least I would not. Potential copper issues and copper toxicity, and then 25% alfalfa hay. So we just keep feeding less alfalfa hay. That's a 15.5% crude protein ration. Feed cost per ton is way more, 333 a ton, but because these lambs are growing faster, because there's more corn or more barley or more wheat, the feed cost per pound of gain is going down because these lambs converted about a five to one. So we went from over 10 on straight alfalfa because it's not very energy dense. It's got more fiber, so they can't, it doesn't digest as fast, it doesn't flow through as fast, so they can't eat as much. So on this ration right now that I have up, uh, we'd expect those lambs to eat about three to three and a half percent of their body weight. Uh, if we cut the hay down to 10%, we might get up to 4% body weight intake, and we can maybe kick the gain up even a little higher. Now, Phil talked about four to one feed conversion on those lambs. Uh, in Iowa, we maybe feed, we might feed 10% hay. Many of those lambs are fed on whole shell corn, a pelleted protein supplement, commonly referred to as the Parker pellet. Uh, that's 34, 36% crude protein in that supplement, and then the right amount of selenium, other trace minerals, uh, vitamins as well. And the only fiber or roughage those sheep lambs get usually is bedding, or maybe they'll put a big round bale of corn stalks in there, let them chew on that a little bit. If we've got an unbalanced diet, we have to be careful of, we're going to run into problems with urinary calculi as we feed higher grain rations. So we need to fix that with salt, limestone to get the calcium phosphorus ratio right. Selenium deficiency, so we can get into white muscle. Even on weaned lambs, we can still have problems with white muscle. Phil talked about mastitis and zinc and selenium and vitamin E being involved in immunity and being able to fight that disease. It's the same way with these feedlot lambs. If we're not getting those trace minerals in there, the sheep are gonna have poor health, poor immunity, and they're gonna have more problems with res respiratory disease, hoof problems, and then coccidiosis, as we talked about, and we can use either decox uh, at about 15 to 20 grams per ton, up to 27, because that's what a pound of decox is, 27 grams, or we can use Bovitec. In reality, Bovitec should be the better choice. 
because it will help us about 5% on feed efficiency. Now, Bovatech is what I call a coccidia stat in that it contains the coccidiosis levels that are currently in the sheep. Whereas Decox is a coccidia side, it actually kills off the coccidia. And if we have problems with coccidia where those, especially if you're a farm flock operation type that are listening today where you've got the sheep in the same facilities year in and year out, they're always there. Coccidia is much more of a problem. Goat people, you would be using rumensin instead of Bovatech or Decox probably. Uh, but rumensin is not cleared for sheep. All right, we got to remember these lambs, especially coming off pasture, coming off range land, they are used to forage diets. They haven't seen any corn, they haven't seen any starch. We've got to get them adapted slowly to those high grain diets. So I might start them on a tenth of a pound of grain a day and feed them that for a couple of days, make sure they're coming to the bunk. And also get them vaccinated as Phil talked about when you wean them, give them their second booster two to three weeks later so that they can have that prevention against enterotoxemia or overeating disease. Uh, we can use barley or wheat instead of corn. Um, I looked up what you guys grow in Idaho and those are your grain sources, not corn. I'm just talking about corn. I've been accused of working with, for the corn board in Iowa, uh, but I really don't, but it's great feed. I don't ever see a ewe turn her nose up at shell corn. They don't waste it. Uh, so one of the problems with barley and wheat is it's a lot higher protein content which is not bad. So what it means to me is on the protein supplement, we don't need to include nearly as much, probably could get by with five to 10% inclusion rate. So that means we've got to make the other nutrients like the minerals, the vitamins, the ionophore or decox more concentrated because we're feeding less per day. So you need to check with your local feed store, feed supplier, to see what they have for a protein supplement. Uh, on wheat, generally the guidelines on feeding wheat to sheep or ruminants is the coarsely process it. We don't want it ground too fine because if you grind it too fine, it'll be like dough in the rumen and that won't be good. In most cases, we don't want to feed more than 50% of the ration as wheat. Uh, so we don't feed like an 80, 20, wheat protein supplement ration because it's just too hot and it's too fine and we get into problems with it not passing through the system and digestive up, just upsets. Okay, all right, so that's about feeding lambs and that's not very many specific rations. Uh, I don't know what you have locally available. You can contact me, tell me what you got. I can do rations for you. You can go through Ask an Expert at Premier. You can email me, give me a call. Let's talk about feed and use. Pastures are drying up. And there's no feed out there because it won't rain. You can feed big packages, uh, big round bales, big square bales, doesn't make any difference. But one of the ways we can stretch the hay supply on ewes is to limit their access. If they're weaned, they can eat enough hay in an hour to two and meet their needs. So we can limit their access every day for an hour, maybe an hour and a half, maybe two hours. Depends on how good your hay is. If you've got some really junk grass hay, they may need to eat full feed. What if it's really good alfalfa hay, you know, one level below dairy quality so you can afford to buy it, then maybe they only need to eat three pounds a day and they can do that in an hour and a half. The precaution with limit feeding, this way with big packages. You gotta have enough big packages out there so that all the ewes can eat at once because you pull them off feed for 24 hours. Open the gate, turn them loose. They're gonna be three deep around those hay rings if you don't have enough space. And then somebody's gonna get dead and suffocated, broken neck, whatever. So you gotta have a lot more feeder space so everybody can eat at once. Now, 
Is it exactly an hour or two hours? No, you as the shepherds have to decide, you have to monitor body condition, where they're at, are they holding their own? Do they need a little more time? Do they need a little less time? But that'll give you a way to go uh, to help control, reduce your feed cost on the ewes. On pasture acres, if you've still got some grass, you can do the same thing. Let the ewes only out to graze for two hours a day. It'll increase your feed, your carrying capacity by 50% because they tend to overeat too much. There's not very many, very many ewes that get skinny on grass if there's plenty of grass out there. If they do, they either got a real worm problem or they're OPP positive or have yonis or some other condition that they can't keep up. On pastures, if it's gone, there's not much out there, shut them off. Because in your dry country, if you abuse that ground, rangeland as well, it takes forever for it to heal up and recover like years. In Iowa, it'll, it hopefully will start raining next year and we can see the pasture down and have it re-going in, in one year. It may take you guys three or four or five years under range conditions or longer for that to heal up. So we can't abuse it now. So I put them in the dry lot, put them on hay. So cheap rations for use, if we have, um, and I'm plant saying these are on use. If I let them have full access to alfalfa hay, decent quality, 18% crude protein, 56%, 58% TDM, they'll eat about five pounds of that stuff a day. Cost me 44 cents a day to feed them. They only need 3.8 pounds a day to meet their requirements. So I can, if I can limit them that much by restricting the time, hand feeding them, tub grinding my hay, put it through a TMR, fence line, bump feed it. I can cut their feed costs six cents a day. Not, not quite, a little over 5% feed costs. The other way we can do it, we can feed 2.2 .2 pounds of hay and a pound of corn or a little over. So that's 34 cents a day. Even though corn's really high, they don't waste any of that hay. I'll guarantee you, you won't have any hay waste at two pounds a day. Now, your sheep are not going to be happy. Those of you will think they went to a concentration camp. You might see problems with wool picking if you're really restricting the dry matter intake in those ewes. And if they're getting that way, then I would put, you could what you could do is use some straw and give them access to straw to chew on to help give them something to ruminate on and keep them fuller. So that's th three different ways we can use alfalfa. Uh, I would always limit hay. I never, I, I hardly ever want to feed sheep use more than four pounds of hay a day. Because once I get above four pounds, I've met the requirements and then they get to be picky. They get to waste it. The first year I started at Iowa State University, we did some enterprise records and producers were losing $100 a year. So feed cost, feed cost, feed cost is all I talked about for years. Because feed costs are over half of our cost of production. And I'm at a meeting one night and I'm talking and this, I go, if you've got stems in the hay feeder the next day, you're feeding your ewes too much. And this lady in the audience says, you mean you want my me make those ewes eat those stems? I said, you paid the same price for the stems as you did the leaves. Yes, I want you to make the ewes eat the stems. And they will, but you've got to control it. Uh, in terms of cheap rations for use, all potatoes, basically that's starch. It's a high water starch, but it's starch, so it can replace corn. Sugar beet pulp may be another option for you to replace corn, and it would also add more fill. I had a client I was doing rations for in Colorado that had free call onions, and we were dry lotting 600 nannies on call onions and hay. Call onions, again, are a high starch source and a high water source. There's like 85, 90% water in onions. 
but it's highly digestible. You got to worry about getting them adapted to it. If you're using alfalfa, okay, as your roughage source, you've already got plenty of protein. So peas and lentils don't work very well. But if you've got oats or wheat straw available, which is no energy, no protein, it's filler. It's kind of like putting a cotton ball through them. But you can add peas and lentils to that alpha or that wheat straw and get a balanced ration. You get your energy and your protein from the peas, lentils, and then that can eat three, two to three pounds of straw a day and you can maybe save some money. Phil talked about on straight stover and straw, ewes don't eat very much, lose a lot of weight. One of the reasons they don't eat very much on that diet is it's protein deficient. So we're short nitrogen for the bacteria in the rumen. So they can't effectively digest the forage because there's not enough nitrogen. So if we kick the little protein soybean meal into that straw Stover ration, Phil, I think those sheep would eat uh, maybe another half a pound and we wouldn't have to feed that corn. But seven, no, about 450 a ton here. So it's probably 550 a ton out there if you can even get it. Uh, other ways to do some things, North Dakota State did some work you know, 30 years ago. Uh, at the Hedinger station where they were tub grinding uh, wheat straw and alfalfa. In their study, they fed a diet to dry use of 80% straw, 50% alfalfa. I don't think that's got enough protein, uh, but I think you could feed use on four pounds of, or two pounds of wheat straw, two pounds of alfalfa. That's gonna cost you about 30 cents a day, assuming you can buy wheat straw for $100 a ton. So again, that's $200 a ton alfalfa hay, $100 a ton wheat straw, four pounds. You got to tub grind it or it'll have too much waste. Now, what you could do is just put a bale of wheat straw out there in a feeding ring and then hand feed two pounds alfalfa hay a day and not mess with the tub grinder. Uh, if you have, you're, you're located close to a local dairy so he might be getting tub grinder to come in every day or once a week anyway. They could grind up your batch and then haul it to your place with the TMR mixer or dump truck or whatever. Uh, and then you can feed that to your use. So we have an excellent set of um, for doing feedlot lamb rations as well as U rations. It's available through the ISU, Iowa State University Extension Store. Uh, that Excel spreadsheet costs you $100. Uh, you can contact me via Premier Ask an Expert. Uh, you can check with your local people about balancing rations, what's available uh, to see what you can do. Because there's lots of different ways we can feed sheep. Because they're a ruminant, they've got tremendous flexibility. Uh, but obviously, one of the key things that nobody's talked about yet today is we wean these lambs, we gotta have feeders. I'm not feeding them on the ground because then we get coccidiosis, then we get various worms, we get other problems. Feed's too expensive to waste feeding it on the ground right now. Uh, so on lambs, feeder space, if we're self-feeding a ration, we need one to two inches of bunk space per lamb, per head. If we're feeding in a hand feeding situation or limit fed, um, even with the TMR ration, we need six to, no, wait a minute, nine to 12 uh, inches per lamb. So we got to have enough bunk space. Uh, one of the things Phil mentioned was the mid, let's see if I can get this done right, hold it right, there we go. The sheep equipment and housing handbook from Midwest Plan Service, that's also at Iowa State University. It's a nice little guide on building various things, pieces of equipment, feeders, gates, jugs, those kind of things. It's old. Uh, some of the, like the lambing jugs are four by four as well. Our sheep are way bigger, so they don't work that well anymore. But it's uh, 
a very useful tool for you to get an idea on space, building gates, feeders, et cetera, if you want to build your own. Okay. Here's just an example of the spreadsheet, uh, the inputs we put in on those ewes. I've got a hair breed in here now, but if you've got really good wool sheep, you put the wool in there at 10, 12 pounds, it'll make that adjustment on increasing the protein requirement every day. Uh, and then here is the formulation we're doing on some lamb. Nope, this is still in use, sorry. Uh, it'll handle up to 15 different ingredients. You can change the rations. Uh, if you've got a hay test on your hay, you can plug that in as your own feed values um, and do that that way. So in this case, these ewes are eating 107% um, of maximum. Let's see if I can get, oh, see if I can get, there it is, my arrows over there. So they're eating more than they can eat. It's 29% above, 129%, so we're also feeding them too much. Ah. So they're gaining weight. These ewes on this diet are currently at about a tenth of a pound a day gained. And younger ewes, because they're smaller, gain a little more. Uh, this is old, too, because it's $178 a ton on feed costs. So feed costs are really high. The good news is the lamb market's really high, so it's still very profitable feeding lambs. Uh, U prices are high as well. So one of the things to control feed costs is to sell the bottom 10%. Get rid of those sorry individuals that don't pay the bills. If you got used with mastitis, get them out of there, get them sold. The coal U market is really good. They're bringing, I saw Texas use this week, Hair ewes in Texas were bringing 150 to $200 a piece, and they're like 110 pounds. So the ewe market's still really good. So I'd, I'd think about doing some liquidating. And the other reason to do it is we need to get those call ewes sold before we collapse the market. Because if we don't start getting rain somewhere in the country, there's going to be lots of call ewes, and nobody's going to have any feed, and they're not going to be worth anything. And neither are breeding ewes. Now, hopefully this weather pattern will straighten up, but you know, once we start to get dry, it usually stays dry. So I'm a little nervous. All right, with that, I'll take questions. And that was really fast, sorry. No, that was great, Dr. Morical. Thank you. Um, looks like you got a couple questions. You got a question here. Um, about corn silage and feeding and finishing lambs as an as an option, and um, maybe how could we go about doing that, or is that a good option to utilize? Okay, for corn corn silage is great feed. It's really nutrient dense. It's already processed. There's very little waste. You got to supplement protein, some minerals. The problem is we got to have enough use, and we got to be set up to do TMR have a TMR wagon, fence line feeding, okay? Uh, if we can do those things, normally like to feed off of a, a tube, uh, you gotta feed about a thousand pounds a day. So if you know what I'm, the ag bag, sorry, I'll get the right terminology. So you gotta have feed about a thousand pounds a day. So you need at least 250 ewes to feed enough per day, okay? Uh, if you've already got a dairy operation, or you got a local dairy you can buy the corn silage from so it stays fresh. You can use corn silage. It's nutrient dense, you don't have to feed very much. Uh, it's just getting it delivered to the sheep is a problem. Now, feeding lambs. Uh, we don't have a lot of experience feeding lambs with a corn silage based ration. Now, corn silage is 50% corn, 50% roughage. So it's like 50% alfalfa, 50% corn, except we gotta put more protein with it. So it's gonna limit intake a little bit. It's gonna limit performance. They're not gonna be as efficient if you sell them later. You know, if you wanna feed them an extra month to two to six weeks to get them to market weight, corn silage will work because it's cheap and economical. The way to price 
uh, at least the way I was taught to price corn silage, it's eight times the, times the price of corn, which right now is $7 a bushel, so that's 56. And you add $12 for chopping and packing, so now we're up to $68 a ton for corn silage. But it's 70% TDN, so it's, it's 20, almost 20% more nutrient dense than alfalfa hay. Uh, you want corn silage to be around 40% dry matter, ideally. Uh, for dairy operations, a lot of times they have cut it because they try to maximize quality on corn silage. So they put it up a little wetter at 35% moisture or dry matter. Uh, sheep have a hard time on really wet silage eating enough per day, especially lactating ewes, late gestation ewes. Uh, but those rations are definitely an option. That was a long windy answer. No, I, I think that's a good answer. What I know what it's a maybe, good answer. It's just maybe, a long answer. What what are maybe some some risks that are involved with feeding like a silage or um, a haylage to our small ruminants? Um so we use we use baleage at Premier. We got like 900, 500 to 900 hair use, depending on the market situation. Um, we cannot sell feed baleage to our ewes because they get too fat, because it's too good a feed. We don't lose all the leaves. It's much more palatable. We have less waste. So it baleage is really good, okay? But it's, it's really good to the point that it, you get too fat, so you got to really watch intake. Corn silage, the most common problem we have with corn silage is listeria. And that's from not getting it packed right, not chopping it fine enough, not keeping the face fresh enough, you know, putting it in a bunker and not doing a good job of packing it. You know, typically when we put up corn silage, which we may do this year, a lot of guys will just pile it on the ground. If we get into a drought and they, insurance pays for it and we can chop it for feed, cheap feed, pack it, throw it on a pile and then try to pack it, not get it back good enough. We got spoilage and then we get into Lister. Um, and it's just not a good thing. Great, but generally when we have these, you know, as long as it's packaged right and are we have enough use or does to eat that um, we can avoid some of those risk factors around listeria yes I'm correct and, and okay. but ideally we'd want to chop finer than they would for for dairy cows or cattle or feed, feedlot cattle dairy there the dairy industry tries to process their silage pretty tight as well um so it's, it's getting it processed as fine as possible, the right moisture content to start with, getting it packed well, get it sealed well, then feed it up and up. Um, probably the worst listeria case I ever worked on was a guy that had cornstalk bales and was tub grinding them, but he didn't have a prongs on his front end loader. He just used the bucket to pick those bales up and he was getting dirt in the tub grinder. And he had a terrible time with listeria because he was feeding them dirt. Hmm. Well, um, yeah, that, that even answers some questions for me and, and some producers. Phil, I noticed you unmuted. Did you have a comment? Yeah, we have quite a few people that have transitioned to corn silage um, because it is usually a cheap feed and it does work, work well. Um, in a lot of different diets, but as Dr. Morical talked about, late gestation is not one of those time periods, but you need to have more sheep, for one, for it to work, so you can keep it fresh like Dr. Morical talked about, and you also have to have some kind of delivery system that's different where you're, you know, a feed wagon or, you know, you're feeding a TMR, uh, and so you, and you have to have bunk space for everybody to eat at the same time, and so you have to transition it works, it's way cheaper when you do that um, in terms of the delivery, um, but you, then they have to clean everything up that day. You can't self-feed um, corn silage like you might hay. 
So um, it is a, it's a mind change, but it does work well. Right. And here at USU, here in Utah, we, we have actually fed a corn silage TMR to our roughly 400 ewes and a number of does also, and have been pretty successful. But like you said, we, we had the numbers and, you know, we had a feed wagon. And so uh, some of those things you talked about were, were being met. If anyone has any other questions. I have one more comment I forgot to make. Sure. Uh, and that, that is when, when we, if we start going to some of these restricted intake diets, you know, feeding only two pounds of hay a day and a pound of corn, uh, if you're free choice in a sheep mineral, those ewes are going to start eating way, way, way more than they need to because they're bored and they're hungry and they'll just overconsume the minerals. So you need to watch that, put out plain salt maybe to kind of provide some extra salt, uh, maybe put out a week's supply at a time because those ewes will start hogging down the mineral just because you're not feeding them very much uh, specifically on, on those diets. Yeah. Dr. Morical, is there other risks besides the cost of that, that they're over-consuming? Um, I mean, there's a cost. It's the well, cost, Phil, is okay. mostly what I worry about. I, you know, they're probably they're, not going to get anything toxic, but I don't like wasting feed ever. And we found that using, when we're using corn silage, that we will we'll just add the TM salt into their TMR and that solves a lot of our problems of overconsumption. Yeah. And, and, uh, and if I, I can feed the mineral in a TMR, that's the way I'd always do it. I'd never free choice. it Cause I am, I know I'm, I am absolutely 99.9% .9 sure that I'm smarter than the use on what they need. Um, so you actually had another question pop up, Dr. Morical. Good. So there's an individual who's planning on uh, feeding some weaned lambs a barley pellet, which is 11% protein with a mixed grass hay. Uh, do they need to add more protein? And they're also uh, trying to wean at 60 days during July in northern Idaho. Whew. Okay, so the good news is that July in northern Idaho, it may be hot, but it's not humid. Okay, uh, grass hay can be anywhere from 8% protein. May, well, maybe start up. It can be from 5% crude protein to 15. Depending on the species of grass, stage of production, you cut it in and what cutting it is. So I think a 16, 60 pound lamb, we went in 60 days, 40, 50 pound lambs, they need a 15% crude protein ration. Okay, so that you're gonna add, you gotta add some protein. Okay. Because so grass is not enough. And because, because you're not feeding alfalfa, you're not putting calcium in there. So you gotta add a lot of limestone as well, or you're gonna have calculi. Yep. And there, there's actually some great studies that just came out of Idaho showing that, you know, no matter what time of year, irrigated pastures or rangeland, uh, some of those mineral requirements like zinc, or selenium are not being met um, for some of our animals. So those are things to think about also. Yep. So, so you gotta, you gotta balance the whole ration, not just worry about, well, I can, I'll just fill them up on cheap hay and give them a little barley pellet because you are not getting the trace minerals in there. We're not getting the vitamins in there. We don't have a deck, we don't have an ionophore or coccidia stat. We don't have any salt. And we don't have enough protein. So yeah, you can feed them that way. They, they, you know, maybe gain half as fast as they should. Uh, so I want to feed them a balanced diet, meet, meet all their nutrient requirements. So okay. if you want to work on that, call me. <laughs>